Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Pat and welcome to the first episode in my trying to actually learn Korean with BTS. And this is an, a series that I planned um, during my unboxing of the Learn Korean with BTS video that I did. So this is the first day. So I am studying chapter 1 and chapter 2. Before you actually start with chapter 1, there's an introductory part where they teach you the Hangul alphabet, which is a Korean alphabet. Now for me, I already learned the Korean alphabet years ago and it's pretty easy to learn. The only confusing part is that some of the letters can sound very close to each other and there are different forms of different uh, for different words and obviously there are some rules in the writing. Now, now I think that if you are really going to be starting to learn very important that you master as much as you can the hangul before you actually you know start with it because the expressions that are being taught are written in korean but also in english it will definitely help you as you go through the chapters when you actually know already how to read the alphabet and the sentences and the phrases and the word for me also because i've been watching korean dramas for years and i have tried to learn korean before i'm very familiar phrases and common words so it was pretty easy for me to do chapter one and chapter two because some of the grammar rules that are taught i already know so that being said would i find it easy to learn with this i think so but again before you actually start to go through the different chapters it's very important that you master as much as you can the hangul alphabet so knowing the letters and the different consonants and vowels and how to write in korean there are certain letters in the alphabet that sound very similar and there are these characters that are double consonants wherein when you write them they're one character but they're a combination of the same characters like double so um i will show you in a clip in a little bit how that's gonna look so again those letters sound pretty similar to each other and even now i still have difficulty trying to distinguish those letters from each other so the pen is definitely helpful because you have the option to listen to it in english korean japanese and espanol depending on your mastery of the language now for me most of the words that are taught both in chapter one and chapter two are very familiar to me so it was pretty easy for me to like really breeze through the chapters even the rules and the grammatical stuff even the um colloquial ways you could say it i'm already familiar with also the pronunciations and how the different consonants might sound the same but there's like specific ways in terms of like it will help in terms of forming it with your um mouth the way you say it like all all uh, uh, those are different letters and when you say those words out, out loud and sometimes for some people it might be like how is that different so for me uh, for the most part i'm able to understand or distinguish those sounds sometimes i still get confused but i think that's pretty natural especially since you know i haven't really practiced korean a, a lot but again because i've watched korean dramas for like more than half my life now at this point i'm very like used very much used to hearing the language and the words for chapter one i only used like a page um, of notes because i pretty much know most of the words and the grammar rules that are introduced and pretty much even the actual expression was pretty easy for me to learn because obviously there's a different way that they form sentences a different arrangement like the subjects the verbs the adverbs there are different rules that you have to go through and again i have tried to learn korean before so i'm very familiar with it that's why chapter one and chapter two i pretty much went through them in like an hour less than i think even um, i just i wanted to make sure that i was going through everything so i'm going to switch to video now because i really talked about certain stuff that you can see on the book and features that and certain stuff that i want you guys to be able to see as i explain it i don't want to just use my voice to do an overview so i'm gonna switch the video now and then yeah for example the character for g slash k uh, this character right here so you pronounce it as k like this specific one you pronounce it as like a mixture between g and k k 
ke. So it doesn't really sound as like ge, but it actually but it doesn't really sound like ke. So it's like a combination between the two. Ke. Ke. Like it's a it's a, like it's like a soft G but a hard K. And then for example, we have um this letter. That's there's K word. This is a true K. This one. Ke. As you can hear. Ke. Ke. So when you say that, it's k. It's a strong K. Rather than. Ke. Tense consonants, so that will be the equivalent of here. So we have the G slash K um, character, and then you have the K character, and then you have the tense consonants, double ones. And this one is G. So this is like their strong G. So we have a G slash K, then we have the strong K, or like their true K, and then their true G. Then the same goes for their D slash T. So they have this character that's D right here. And then if you put a line, that's their true T. T. And then they have a stronger D. So let's look at that. So this is a D slash T. And then this is their T. And then this, and then this one is their strong D. Like this one is D. D. This one is T. <laughs> this one is t like it's hard for me to say even specifically I like the different sounds in that it makes it more distinct from each other that's why I also saw this TikTok from a I don't I think he's Chinese but he can speak Japanese Chinese and Korean and he was talking about the way say Jungkook is not actually Jung Jungkook it's like a ch Jung Jungkook because the J is not really like a true J, but it also had a CH. So they have a character for J, but also a CH. So the character is this one. So when we spell Jungkook's name, we use this one. So this is what it sounds like. So you can see it's not J, it's J. It's like a J and a G, Ch combined. And then they have this, which is their true Ch sound. And then they have double J, which is a true J, like J. It's a little difficult to distinguish the sounds, that's what I'm having trouble with. Once you study that and you kind of got a grasp of it, plus they put the NG character in front of a vowel if a word starts with a vowel, so like army. So we know army in, in English, the English alphabet, it's written like this. And once you learn the hangul, you know, the army in Korean is written like this, army. Now this is also a consonant. If you use it, it's like pang, pang. Let's say the word pang, pang tan, right? So pang. That one will be written as pang, pang. So, or in the romanization of it. But we don't say nami. When a word starts with a vowel, they need, the character needs to start with this one. It's like a placeholder. They have a silent, that's their silent consonant. So they tell you like the different parts of a word, like the batu is the final consonant that comes after a vowel with each syllable block. So Korean words are written in blocks. It's just, just like army, it has two syllable blocks. When we say syllable blocks, it means that they're one letter, one character. You can definitely see it when you type on the computer or with your so certain words will combine with each other depending on you know the rules of how it's written down. So that's also another thing that you need you have to have a good grasp of. So they have examples here, these blocks right here. So you have consonant vowel or consonant vowel on the side or on the top, or you can have consonant and then a vowel. So that will apply, for example, this one. That's a. Ah. Ah. Then you, you. This is we, we, we. When you have a combination of the vowels, that's how some. The more you like read it and learn about the different words and see examples of different words like um, these, you will have a better understanding of where to put the words when you're actually writing them down. It's pretty easy to learn for me to 
like, I don't know, who we can really understand. The majority of the rules when you're writing down and also memorizing the sounds of each letters, these are really good practices. And you can use definitely the pen to help you with um, pronouncing the words that you have here. So it's definitely imperative if you don't know the language yet and the alphabet, that you practice these and actually do these. I didn't have to because, again, I already know I like the obvious basic words like Pi, Pada. It also can get really confusing once you learn more words. Like, for example, this is supposed to be an S sound, this one. But you pronounce this as Ut. That's a, that's a word for close. So, Ut. No, that's it for chapter one. Let's go to chapter two and see how well I'm gonna do with this one. So this part right here is where I was doing the chapter 2 part and I actually finished this really quickly, really fast. I don't think it was any shorter but I think because I finished the whole Hangul part, it took me a longer time to do chapter 1 because I did, you know, the Hangul first. Here in this chapter, I just brushed up, even with chapter 1, you know, with words that I know or are familiar with, they have this part in the book where they write down the new words that are introduced in the chapter. And so you can listen to it in both Korean. It's written in Korean and then you can listen to the pronunciation and what it means in English. So it definitely helps uh, to look at the bottom. I will show it to you later in the video part. And they also have this part where they show you how these sentences are said in colloquial forms, in, in a colloquial way. It, it, in where it sounds more um, relaxed and also just much more how they usually use it. But also one thing that I don't think that they talk about here because so far I haven't seen it is that um, there are two ways you can speak in Korean, basically. You have the jeondemal and the banmal. Now, the jeondemal is the formal one and the banmal is how you talk to very close friends. Even like close, even friends that you know that you're, you know, even the same age with, if you're strangers or you don't really, you're not very, very close to each other, um, you're still gonna talk in Jeondemal. So that's, that's when you have yo at the end of most sentences or in Nida. And for Banmal, it's only with like very, very close friends that you have or with um, younger family members and stuff. So they're very particular about that as well. Uh, so they don't really talk about that here. But yeah. They ha but they do have that colloquial way to say it. It's still like in the Jondemal way, but it's not very relaxed, you know, not very formal way of talking. So, yeah. They have these things at the bottom where if they introduce you to a new word, they write it down. So that's good. So it's nice to pay, so pay attention to those things and maybe write what they mean. And they also have these things up the top, which are nouns, um, adverbs, and what the DB is. And then the B is verb. So like you see here. focus on an expression for each. I think there's two expressions per chapter. When a speaker's speech, the pitch goes up at the end of the sentence. The sentence becomes a question in Korean. But they have these arrows in like different phrases that they have or sentences that they have. That means the inflection goes up or the pitch goes up. So uh, this particular sentence that I showed you, it says Kama, kabangi isoyo. So it goes up and it's a question. So do you have a bag? So Depending on the inflection, it could be a sentence or a um, question. For example, you're asking a question. You're asking if that person has a um, transportation card. If you say, you're answering the question. You're saying, I have a transportation card. And then, yeah, 
context one, so I feel like it's very helpful that you have ways of listening to it in Korean and English, and they explain it to you, and they have these symbols that make it easier for you to understand as you go through the different lessons. I feel like it's very helpful still, so I feel like you will still learn a lot from this. And then these parts right here, you can't read in Korean, you can't listen to it in Korean. I wish we could. Like, I'd love to hear it, but definitely that's more advanced, I guess, because I like to follow Korean translations of how you say stuff and reading it in English, because that helps. It's kind of like watching a drama. So you hear them say it, and then you hear the new translations they say it. I don't like that, but it doesn't work like this. That's it for right now. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys you know, got an idea on how this will work. If you have any questions on the book, the different chapters are laid out and stuff like that, you can get a comment down below and then I'll try to answer it in either the comments or in the next video.